it's time to throw it over to the West Coast, Best Coast time for a news hit with Will Selva out of Cali. Hey, what's going on there, Kimmy? Glad to have you on. Nice to have Idris Alba with us as well, Pep Guardiola, <laughs> and also Clay Martin as well. Love all of you. Uh, I know that Mike was asking who my doppelganger is, and it would be Jimmy Fallon. I get that a lot. Ah, so, Jimmy Garofalo, Fallon. I was there somebody that you were thinking? Yeah. Yeah, a Andy Garcia. Maybe a younger Andy Garcia. That's what I'm thinking for you. Oh, okay. My mom, my mom has said that. So, thanks to ah. you and my mom for thinking that. So, it's right. Andy Garcia, for sure. Yes, well done, my friend. You know what, Garofalo? You're going up as my favorite uh, guy ever, uh, I think, over Adam Rank. You are, are gaining, uh, you're gaining steam on I just, right there. I should so. have just not said anything. Uh, That's okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's right, Kimmy, you're doing an awesome job. Great to have you with us. There is some news. Uh, we've obviously had Darius Leonard on the program, the Colts linebacker, friend of the show. And, of course, he had nothing but great things to say about his new quarterback, Carson Wentz, when asked by USA Today if Wentz was the guy to take them to the Super Bowl. Again, this is a fantastic response. Thank you to the broadcasting gods for letting me say this. Leonard answering, quote, damn, Skippy, he's a monster, man. Just watching him in OTAs and stuff, he's got a cannon for an arm and he's huge, later saying he came into a perfect place to have success. We believe in him. The Maniac with a great quote that I was able to read. Meanwhile, former first overall pick, Alex Smith, has been in the news lately. Smith, who San Francisco took with the number one pick back in the 2005 draft, was asked about his draft classmate, Aaron Rodgers. The Green Bay Packers and their franchise QB are currently mired in a stalemate in an interview with USA Today Sportsman saying, quote, clearly, it's not an ideal situation, not what it should be, and that Rodgers is, quote, owed a certain level of respect from the team. All right, so don't believe everything you hear, especially if you're a member of the media, listening to what seven-time Super Bowl champ Tom Brady is saying, the Bucks QB stating on HBO's The Shop. Here we go. What I say and what I think are two different things. I would say 90% of what I say is not what I'm thinking, which is challenging. I always try to play it super flat. From a strategic standpoint, I never want to give away what I'm doing. I usually say the opposite. If they got a bleep corner, I'll say, that guy's unbelievable. I don't know how they can complete balls over there. And in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm going to go at that bleep all day. I don't want to give them anything. I am surprised that Brady uh, never says uh, anything that is too revealing out there, right? Brady, here he is showing that he's cold-blooded. Reminds me a lot of Denzel in The Equalizer when he said, when you pray for the rain, you better get ready for the mud. And you know, <laughs> TB12 is always ready to get dirty when he's on the field, Kimmy. Oh, man. Well. So this is interesting, y'all. So we just heard Tom Brady opening up about his career in a way we've never heard before. He's cussing. He's sitting back in the shop. He's a cool guy now. Uh, what are your reactions to seeing this side of TB12? I'm not surprised at all. Uh, two things. Uh, one AFC championship game, I was up in Foxborough covering it before uh, Mike Giardi existed. Well, he existed. He just wasn't with us covering them every day up there in Foxborough. Anyway, uh, so I asked a, a question to Brady because I said, this guy sounds like he's under the weather right now. And I said, are you sick? You got, you got something going on? He said, no, I'm fine. So 90% chance based on that quote that I was right and he was sick and he played through it and he was fine. That's number one. Uh, number two, I'm not surprised to hear him say that what he's saying in the press conference is not necessarily what he's thinking with uh, uh, competitive advantage on his mind. Because I go back to 2007. Anthony Smith, the Steelers' safety, guaranteed sure. a win against the undefeated Patriots leading up to that game. Brady and the Patriots didn't fire back, didn't say much. And then what happened on Sunday? Well, 399 yards from Brady, a 34-14 win for New England, and they went right after Smith. Not only with footballs, but with their mouths. Tom Brady seeking him out to let him know, I didn't appreciate what you said leading up to this week, and now your team is going to pay for it. 
on this one. So, yeah, not surprised that he's milk toast in these press conferences while thinking to himself, I'm going to get that guy on Sunday. And also, Nate Burleson, if he were, were here, he would tell a similar story about Alfonso Smith, a cornerback for the uh, Lions who trash talked during the game and then got uh, lit up because Brady said, I'm going to go after that guy. He's not very good. Hmm. Yeah, listen, um, I think most players are like that. You never want to say like, like, oh, this guy's that bad or this guy's trash because you don't want to, you know, you don't want to give that team uh, more ammunition to go out there and play well. Uh, but I played against Tom and it, it's not surprising at all. I mean, the way he plays, the way he's surgical with the football, the way uh, you hear about how they they go after things, the mentality he brought to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, that, that's who he is. And so the greats are like that and, and they're very competitive. And, you know, you can tell when a team or a Tom Brady's going to go after a guy. Uh, I think we saw that in the Super Bowl where uh, the young the young safety, I want to say it was Winfield Jr., got the pick against Tyreek Hill, and he flashed the deuces at him. That's a Tom Brady-like move. You're not going to say much about it throughout the week, but once the game goes, you're going to try to embarrass that guy. And so uh, I've had my fair share of things like that as well, but, I mean, it's awesome to see that Tom Brady starting to open up and kind of let, let everyone see who he truly is deep down the side, uh, a fierce competitor. Sometimes it's awesome. I, I, I found the clip kind of jarring. You know, like we've been watching this guy for over 20 years. In this clip, he, he sounded different. He looked a little different. Um, and I just wonder, like, in the sort of inception part of this, if 90% of what he says in the media is not true, is this itself part of that 90% or is this the 10% part, 10 <laughs> true? Like, I, I can't, is the top spinning or does it fall over? I don't know. But I also, like, so basically what he's saying is that, like, he just BSs everybody like in the media for over two decades. Like that's, that's the MO here. It makes me want to go back and look at some of the stuff that he said, not only the stuff about, uh, you know, opponents and defenses and stuff, but you know, frankly, things have gotten pretty heavy a few times with the Patriots and he's had to talk about it. And is he just being a politician? Do we ever get the authentic part of it? And we only get it one out of 10 times. Um, I don't know. I, I like him opening up too, but I thought this was a strange clip. And it's like one of these things I can't unsee and unhear. And I just wonder if that 90% is going to go down to 80 and 70 and then eventually just zero. Kyle, I got I to gotta rock with you on this one. Now, I have had very few interactions uh, with Tom Brady every single time I have interacted with him. Very sweet, very polite, kind of the buttoned up Brady that you saw in New England. Ever since he joined the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I'm wondering, and especially with this quote now, is this the real Tom Brady? It was weird because now, now the question is, is this actually who you are? Like I said, he was sitting in a barber shop, the antithesis of what blackness is for black men to get a lineup and to get a fresh fade and be sitting in a chair. He was visibly incredibly comfortable sitting alongside all these black superstar athletes and really chopping it up like he was one of the guys, a complete opposite to what we saw in New England. So I like him if this is actually who he is. But to your point, Kyle, uh, for the last 20 years, have we just kind of been fooled? I rock with Tom Brady Regardless, he's the GOAT, but I 